in the 40s and 50s, Singapore was really a very, very backward place. But a father, as an artist, needed to be in touch with the rest of the world. And the only link he could get was through buying books, whatever he could buy in Singapore. And considering the low salary that he was getting in those days, he'd spent, relatively speaking, a huge fortune on buying books. That was important to him. And the books he bought, uh, of course, a lot from, the, from Europe, but he also would buy any kind of intellectual discourse on arts and philosophy from China. Looking back today, he has a rich collection. For as long as I remember, he was always carrying an expensive camera. Gretchen found out that this habit of taking photographs started from a very young age. Well, he was basically a teenager, and there are photographs of him when he went off to study in Shanghai in 1926. We found photographs of him actually posing with his Kodak camera. It's, you know, selfies before the word, way before the word was ever coined. And he took lots of photos of the sketching trips. And so this, today, these photos are quite rare in a very unique collection of, um, of that era in art history. He also was never without a sketchbook. He carried sketchbooks everywhere, furiously. And on top of that, he has written a lot of articles. As an artist, his production of written words is also quite profusive. We were really quite surprised to find out just what a, uh, a, a pack rat he was. For example, he has letters um, dating back from the 1930s with uh, some people who are uh, well known in China today. He also has ephemera, uh, sometimes tucked into books. In the broader context of art history in China and, and, and also in Singapore uh, in the 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, they're, 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 they, they really help to illuminate, you know, those periods. Well, you know, Liu Kang passed away in 2004, and so all of these materials have been kept there and, and untouched. And it was very obvious that at some point we would have to, you know, start going through things and find a proper home for them. I would say it was about a year ago, and, you know, we, Tyker and I spoke about where this home should be. Uh, for Tyker, I think the most important thing is, you know, his father's legacy and and, uh, you know, keeping his name alive. Liu Kang's artwork can be seen at the National Gallery. It's, it's important to have the materials th that sort of encompass this artwork available to scholars. But also it would be, um, you know, a place where, you know, p scholars would know if they wanted to sort of study Liu Kang or that era, or that the materials are here in a place that's accessible and, you know, um, and organized.